Welcome back, Nerd Squad. Who doesn't like to get a little worked up every now and then, am I right? I certainly know that you all enjoy a bit of drama as much as the next person, as it seemed like everyone was excited over our last Marvel Backlash moment list. All the nerd rage! Cause sometimes you just gotta let it out. In fact, you seem to have so much fun last time that we are back again with even more Marvel Backlash moments from the past decade. At least I'm gonna try and keep everything on this list still from the past decade. Because of course, now we're on to part two, which means we're technically in the top 20 with these moments. Wow we! But never fear, because the comic book world is as chock full of controversy as ever. And today we're here to take a look at some of the moments that Marvel fans found the most controversial as we count down the the top 10 newest Marvel Backlash Moments, part two. And of course, if you haven't already checked out the part one for this list, be sure to check it out either before or after this video. All right, let's get counting. Number 10. Mewling Quim. Loki is ultimately a villain, so we wouldn't expect him to speak kindly to many who oppose him, or really hold back at all. Especially when we're first introduced to him in the MCU, he's the bad guy in the first Avengers film, and he definitely goes about trying to prove it. But one moment from the film had people shocked not even in what he was willing to do, but more when it came to what he was willing to say. In the scene with Black Widow, he calls her a Mewling Quim, which is basically old timey speak for the C word. This left many fans shocked and outraged that the language made it into the film, simply for what it implied Loki was saying in terms of our modern day language. As a result, this swear was later censored and changed for some TV broadcasts to Mewling Child. Loki, do you kiss your mother with that mouth? Number 9. Miss Marvel Becomes a Captain For many, the change to Carol Danvers in the comics from Miss Marvel to Captain Marvel was another thing to moan about. And when it came down to it, it wasn't even the change to her character that people were upset with. Most people didn't mind the transition of the title from Miss Marvel to Captain Marvel. I mean, it made sense that she would choose to take on her mentor's name after he perished. Although people did miss Miss Marvel, we found a new one in Fangirl of Inhuman Descent, Kamala Khan, who many quickly fell in love with. What people really hated about this change was the look. People missed the Miss Marvel costume. And while you could say that sexiness was probably a factor when it came to preference, many would point out Miss Marvel's costume is just a more iconic look for Carol. It was a costume that stood out more and was more considered by fans to be original than the new Captain Marvel look, which was similar to Marvel's look, but simply with the colors reversed. Although Carol did manage to keep her sash from the classic Miss Marvel look, this wasn't really enough to appease fans. Number 8. The Mandarin Twist In Iron Man 3, the villain Mandarin appears, but it is later revealed from the film that this Mandarin is a washed up actor named Trevor Slattery, who is basically used as a puppet to play the part. Fans felt they'd been robbed of having a proper Mandarin and expressed their disappointment at the change to the character. This backlash prompted Marvel to reach out, assuring fans that the true Mandarin was still out there somewhere in the MCU. Now we are expected to see the true version of Mandarin appear in the upcoming film, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Hopefully this version doesn't incite nerd rage. Number 7. The Ultimate End the death of the 1610 universe was seen during the Secret Wars event of 2015. In fact, all of the alternate worlds seemed to have faded away following numerous incursions which resulted in the destruction of the multiverse. Out of the multiverse's ashes, Battleworld was built by a mega-powered Doctor Doom, who would go on to be revered as God Emperor Doom in the reality that he had stitched together, using bits and pieces of splintered realities. In the end, Battleworld would come to an end all its own, and Reed Richards using the powers of Molecule Man would rebuild the entire multiverse. However, something that we wouldn't see return following these events would be the Ultimate Verse, a darker, more edgy alternate version of Marvel 616 that had become well loved by fans for just how different it was. Needless to say, many were upset when its line of comics was permanently removed following the events of Secret Wars. This was a universe, after all, that was once in competition with Earth 616 in regards to which should be declared the main continuity. But at least we managed to keep Miles Morales and the Maker from 1610 both great characters. And of course, Earth 1610 still exists, it just doesn't have its own comic line anymore. What's up with that? Number 6. Political Censorship Yep, we're going there again. In part one of this list, we touched on Marvel's apolitical approach to politics, which remains their stance. And in addition to that, it seems Marvel, when teamed up with Disney, has no problems with uh, making alterations to their films, however, to appease to the Chinese government, and more specifically, the Chinese box office. 
that money. Only around 40 foreign films reportedly make it into China's box office each year, and the money that a film can gross from a Chinese release is huge. So huge that Disney and Marvel appear to go to great lengths to censor and alter their films in order to guarantee a spot. In fact, it was ticket sales from China that allowed Avengers Endgame to replace Avatar as the highest grossing film of all time. Now, the MCU actually hasn't seen as much backlash for their censorship as not many really know about it. The biggest back Backlash Marvel and Disney saw was from their choice to change the Ancient One's character when they cast Tilda Swinton in the role, changing the Ancient One from a Tibetan to a Celt. While creatives claimed that this was actually a choice made to avoid stereotyping, the bigger reason behind this was probably to lock in their spot in the Chinese market, who have a long history of conflict with Tibet. Number 5. Digital Downloads Marvel has made both retailers and customers frustrated when it comes to their approach in regards to digital comic book downloads. It all started when Marvel announced they'd be including digital download codes in each print issue for three pre-selected issues of different comics. Previously, comics had included a free digital download for the issue that you'd actually purchased. Now, the change to policy evoked outrage from fans and retailers alike who bemoaned the loss of getting a digital copy of the comic that they'd actually wanted, the one that, you know, they'd already purchased, as opposed to ones that usually didn't equal as much in value. Fortunately, Marvel responded to their criticism, returning to their normal policy in due time. Number 4. Recasting Old Characters The debate surrounding inclusion and diversity has been ongoing and long. So much has been said in just the world of Marvel even around this issue that I definitely don't have enough time to touch on everything here in one single point. However, a big controversy that Marvel seems to have sparked major opinions on is the recasting of established superhero roles. Ironheart taking over for Iron Man. Captain Marvel taking over for Captain Marvel, Kamala Khan becoming the new Miss Marvel, Jane Foster becoming the new Thor, Miles Morales as the newer Spider-Man, Falcon becoming Captain America. Marvel appears to be trying to answer the call for diversity, while attempting to maintain guaranteed sales through holding on to familiar names of heroes, familiar trademarks if you will. In essence, they're rebranding these heroes that we are already familiar with. The two sides to this one. One, it has a tendency to alienate some fans who are more established, who are not necessarily about this new change, and who know these established heroes as they were originally, and don't want to see them recast or altered. Two, it invites in some new readers, but also somewhat alienates them, as this superhero already has an established history, and one they might not be familiar with, and might not want to dive into. So, while a push for diversity is happening, it's not necessarily happening in a way that makes everyone feel feel included, as it's meant to, and ultimately doesn't lead to the sales that Marvel is expecting to drum up. The main criticism with the decision to rebrand characters has been that it reveals a lack of creativity, and that Marvel might be running out of ideas, or simply that Marvel is too afraid to risk some sales in order to introduce new characters. Which in the end might actually get them more sales, I don't know. Number 3. Black Widow's Death Marvel has taken a lot of flack for their treatment of Natasha in the MCU, but when she died in Avengers Endgame, a lot of people were furious. Why? Because they felt that it was unfair for Black Widow to have met her end so soon, just as she was, you know, ramping up. And while it wasn't a classic fridging of her character by any means, people still felt that her death was a form of fridging. You know, she got partially fridged. We like closed the door on just half of her. It was Natasha's own choice to sacrifice herself so that her teammates could get the Soul Stone. Now, she did it for her team, and it was her choice. And she prevented Hawkeye from doing so because he has kids and a family. But some felt that Natasha's own lack of self-worth when comparing herself to Hawkeye, a family man, combined with the scene referring to her infertility in Age of Ultron, made it feel like her lack of having children was being used as a reason to devalue her character, implying in a roundabout way that Natasha Natasha was less than because she was a woman who didn't have offspring. Add in the fact that Iron Man, who himself actually had a family at this point, and also died in Endgame, got a huge funeral while Black Widow only got a line or two of acknowledgement for her sacrifice, and it's easy to understand why her death left a bad taste in fans' mouths. Hopefully the Black Widow film will redeem some of these feelings for us. Number 2. Sony and Marvel Spider-Man Deal Last year in 2019, there was a moment when all Spider-Man fans collectively held their breath 
before boiling over like a kettle and speaking out in regards to their frustrations. For many, Tom Holland's Spider-Man in the MCU has become THE Peter Parker, a Spider-Man so many love after years of more questionable portrayals and casting choices, by comparison. So when we got news that Sony, who owns the Spider-Man rights, and Disney, who currently makes the Spider-Man films, were not able to settle on a renewed contract in regards to the character and films, fans were crushed. We haven't actually had much closure on Spidey's story yet in the movies, and fans were expecting more films. Disney, Marvel, and Sony all found themselves being scrutinized by fans in regards to their greediness and their selfishness, each in their own way when it came to settling on a number and a percentage. Fortunately, this issue has since been resolved, and both sides managed to figure out a deal that worked. But for a moment there, an insane amount of us Marvel fans were collectively freaking out. I know I was freaking out. I don't know. Were you guys freaking out? I was like, but I want to know what happens next. This will change things. You'll have to recast Spider-Man. What if it's not a good Spider-Man? Number one, too many crossover events. Ever since the success of Civil War and even before that, crossover events were a big deal in comics. They were used to get people excited about comics and to help boost sales. Marvel actually saw great success with the first Civil War. While DC has their relaunch events, Marvel has their massive crossovers. And while some have been very well loved by fans, Marvel's true believers have also just as often gotten frustrated with Marvel when it came to the sheer magnitude of these events. Sometimes these events are just so huge that they invade every single series and can drastically disrupt a lot of the other story arcs that are already taking place in individual titles. So as much as some people loved the events like Axis, Infinity, and Fear Itself, others had issues with the way that it interrupted and felt like these stories' events were cutting into stories they had already been excited to read. Thank you so much for watching Nerd Squad. What are your opinions on some of these backlash moments? And to to mix some love and positivity into this, help me in exploring the other side by letting me know some of the moments when Marvel really just won you over. What are some of the newest Marvel moments that you just loved so much and as such would like to praise? Share your thoughts down below and be sure to click that subscribe on your way down if you haven't already and join the Nerd Squad. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I'm your host Amanda McKnight reminding you as always to stay nerdy YouTube.